name Yogesh Pandey. I have total uh, 12 years of teaching experience of both ICC and CBC and I have done MSc and BA also and presently I am pursuing postgraduate diploma in school leadership and management. Hi everyone, uh, today we are going to study a new topic and that is known as reflection of light. Now why we are able to see the objects in our day to day life? Now what is light? light actually the sun light which is coming from the directly from the sun so it falls on the objects and it is nothing but it is the energy so light is the energy and due to this energy we are able to uh, perceive the objects we can see the objects all around us so light is nothing but it is the one form of energy so and we also call it as a solar energy so now let us see uh, some of the properties of this now suppose light falls on any plain flat surface let us take the uh, glass mirror okay so let us take this as pq so this is poq and this is the mirror so here is the point o which is known as point of incidence so now let us take the incident ray which is the light ray it is falling on the mirror at point O which is the point of incidence so how it, it will behave now the property of the plane flat surface is most of the light is reflected back again is this again in the same medium suppose it is coming fr from the air medium so again it will get reflected from the reflecting surface of the mirror so this particular surface is the reflecting surface of the mirror I can write here reflecting surface so it will get reflected from the point of incidence and again it will bounce back in the same medium as OB so AO is the incident ray and OB is the reflected ray so here if we want to find the angles so we can draw the normal over here and that is ON ON is the normal so if I find both the angles I will get angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection now what is meant by angle of incidence and angle of reflection as you have all as you all already know that angle of incidence is nothing but the it is the angle between the incident ray and the normal angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal and angle of reflection is the uh, angle of reflection is the angle between the normal and the reflected ray so i can write angle i is equal to angle r and uh, we have already discussed that light is a form of energy and that's why we are able to see the objects all around us now let us uh, study some laws of reflection now the first law says that the incident ray and the normal and the reflected ray you have studied in lower classes also the incident ray normal and the reflected ray all will lie in the same plane suppose one plane is drawn here so wherever all these three points meet at the point of incidence all the three lines that is incident ray normal normal is also one li line which is perpendicular to the flat surface that is pq that is mirror and ob is the reflected ray so incident ray normal and reflected ray all at the point of incident everything will lie in the same plane now what is the second law second law says that the angle of incidence must be equal to the angle of reflection so angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection so so the conditions which obey these two laws so we can say that the proper reflection has been taken place if angle of incidence suppose it is not equal to angle of reflection so that time we will get all irregular type of reflection so i can draw the diagram and show you suppose the surface is rough surface like this and the light is incident like this one ray of light is like this one ray of light is like this so we can draw the arrowheads like this so this rays will incident anyhow anywhere they can reflect so yeah in this case we will not get angle i is equal to angle r both the angles will be would be different so if it, it has to follow the laws of reflection angle of incidence has to be equal to angle of reflection also the surface has to be pl uh, plain flat surface it cannot be a irregular surface if it is irregular sur surface we will not get both the angles that is angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection it will always be unequal because the surface is also irregular 
So, if it is irregular, we can the surface is like this, it is a rough surface. So, we will get irregular reflection where angle i is not equal to angle r. Whereas, in the flat plane surface, we will get the regular reflection and the law is also sat satisfied the second law that is angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So, now what is a plane mirror? Plane mirror is having two sides, one side is a flat plane surface and that is known as a reflecting side that is reflecting surface and the other side we can draw small oblique lines to show the other side silvered it is made up of the material silver uh, that is metal and it is very expensive also and we can protect this by putting a red paint on the other side and uh, it has got a very good reflecting uh, uh, property and that is why it is used in the mirror nowadays aluminum is also used instead of silver coating because silver is expensive so aluminum uh, coating is done it is also a reflecting but not as good as silver and then we apply the red paint means we try to protect this layer silver surface because as long as it is protected we will get the uh, reflecting uh, properties much better means we will get the reg regular re reflections much much better now let us study the other concepts in this this chapter we have two types of spherical mirrors now first one is concave mirror and the next is convex mirror suppose if you take the spoon you have a spoon like this and so you have both the suppose if we take the inside part that is caved part so the caved part is nothing but it is concave part and the outside the bulging part it is known as the convex part so this is a spoon and the inside part you can call it as a concave part the outside part can be convex part so the mirrors are also in the same way if the mirror is like this the inside part which is caved inside okay so that is the reflecting side that is reflecting surface and the outside part it is a silvered part so we can draw small oblique lines like this to show that uh, it helps in the reflection obviously and in the convex mirror also again I will draw it the bulging part like this so the bulging part will be the reflecting surface and the inside part the caved part it is just the opposite of the uh, concave mirror so and the inside part in the convex mirror it will be the non reflecting side or you can say a, it is a silvered part now there are some basic terms which we need to know the first term is center of curvature the second is radius of curvature then pole then there is principal axis then there is principal focus and focal length so what are these basically let us take the example of a concave lens concave lens sorry let us take the example of a concave mirror because we are studying with the mirrors so let us take the example of concave mirror the lens part we, we are going to cover up in the next topic that is a refraction now in a concave mirror so let us draw the concave mirror so the concave mirror is from here like this and then we can draw the oblique lines small oblique lines this side now this is nothing but it is a part of a sphere if I draw the full circle I will get the sphere over here so I can draw a sphere like this So, I will get a sphere like this if we, I draw the round circle. Now, the sphere will have a center that is capital C letter I have uh, marked over here and that is known as a center of curvature. Now, center of curvature it is for the concave mirror. So, this is a mirror and it is a part of the whole sphere and the sphere center is capital C. But this center C is nothing but it is a center of curvature of the concave mirror also. Now, if we take the center point if we take the center point of the here we can take the center point and this point we can mark it as letter capital P and this letter capital P is nothing but it is known as the pole it is known as a pole pole of the mirror all distances has to be measured from the pole of the mirror now there is we can take suppose we have taken here 4 centimeters so at the midpoint that will be 4 divided by 2 so we will get at 2 centimeter we will get one midpoint and this point we can denote it as capital F and this capital F is nothing but it is the 
principal focus it is a principal focus f is known as principal focus principal focus of the concave mirror now you can see the distance from center of curvature that is capital c to capital p that is pole so this distance between the capital c and capital p is known as the radius of curvature so here i have mentioned and i have taken one more point on the circumference of this reflecting side or you can say the whole sphere that is capital a point so capital c and capital a that is ca if i join ca is equal to cp but this is nothing but it is radius of curvature so it is radius of curvature the distance from between the pole that is the center of the concave mirror and the center of curvature will give us the radius of curvature so here we have done the markings that is c is the center of the sphere that is center of curvature capital p is the pole that is the center point of the concave mirror we can put this in bracket then f is the principal focus that is a midpoint of cp that is cent between center and center of curvature and pole that is midpoint that is f that is known as principal focus then there we have cp cp is nothing but it is the line joining the center of curvature and pole and that is known as principal axis this line which we have drawn here it is known as principal axis which is passing through the center of curvature very important point and passing through the pole of the mirror and then we have a uh, cf is equal to fp now we know that this is the radius of curvature that is cn uh, that is cp and we know that uh, f is the midpoint so what is the value of cf and what is the value of fp so when the whole value we take as radius of curvature and we denote it by capital r so here we can write cf is equal to r by 2 and fp is equal to r by 2 so if we write like this so we can get the value of cf and fp that is radius of curvature is equal to r by 2 or instead of radius i can write cf is equal to fp is equal to r by 2 plus r by 2 which is equal to now 2 is the lcm so 2 is the lcm r plus r is 2r 2 and 2 will get cancel and we are left with the r now r is the full value from c to p or i can say cp is equal to r or ca is also equal to r and if i want to find each distance now we know the f is the midpoint so obviously cf is equal to fp it will cf is equal to fp it will be equal to r by 2 so this cf is equal to fp instead of this we can mention over here it is the full distance that is we can write here cp because we are getting r by 2 plus r by 2 is equal to 2r by 2 which is equal to capital r so we are getting the radius of curvature only so earlier i have mentioned your capital r but capital r is nothing it is equal to the distance of cp now let us see some uh, rules how to draw the ray diagrams using a con uh, concave mirror now i have drawn over here concave mirror like this and i have made the principal axis this axis is known as principal axis now capital p is the uh, pole which is the center point of the concave mirror and we have taken the center of curvature also now these are at equal distances suppose i take 2 cm over here and from between f and c also 2 cm so this will be total 4 cm and that is the radius of curvature so if i want to find cf and fp and we know that f is the midpoint so this will be at a 2 cm from the pole and all distances uh, should be measured from the pole okay now suppose there is a ray which is coming parallel to the reflecting side this side is known as a reflecting side as i have already mentioned it is a caved side and it is a reflecting surface or you can write reflecting side so if a, a ray of light is coming parallel to the caved side of concave mirror or to the reflecting side of concave mirror what will happen it will get reflected and it will pass through the point f the mo now point f is nothing but it is a focus point f is the focus so this ray of light will reflect and it will pass through the focus now this is the first rule 
of drawing one of the rays which is incident on the reflecting side of the concave mirror. First what we have done, the ray is coming parallel, then it will hit the reflecting surf, uh, surface and it will get reflected and it will pass through the focus. So, you can see the arrow heads like this, it is going from left hand side to right hand side, then it is reflecting back again and it is passing through the focus. Now, what is the second type? Uh, the second one is exactly the reverse of the first diagram or we can also call it as a reversibility of light. The light, the direction of the light is being reversed. So, again we have the principal axis, again we have the concave mirror. Now, the ray of light is passing through the focus first. It will pass through the focus. So, you can see the arrow heads like this and then it will hit the concave side or the reflecting surface of the concave mirror. So, the inside part is known as the reflecting surface and again it will get reflected back. Now, when it is getting reflected back, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. You can see it is going parallel. So, it is exactly the reverse of the first diagram. The first diagram the ray is going parallel and then it is getting reflected and it is passing through the focus. Second diagram the ray is passing through the focus and then it is becoming parallel to the principal axis. Now, let us see the third diagram. Third diagram again we have the principal axis over here. This is the principal axis and we have the concave mirror. So, again we have P, F and C. C is the center of curvature, F is the focal focus and P is the pole. Now, the ray of light is passing through the center of curvature. So, how it will travel? If the ray of light is passing through the center of curvature and it, it will hit the reflecting side, this is the reflecting side of the concave mirror. So, again it will reflect back along the same path. So, you can see the arrowheads like this. These are the arrowheads when the light is incident on the reflecting side and again it is reflected back along the same path that is again it will pass through the center of curvature. So, these are the three rules which we need to draw the ray diagrams of using a concave mirror.